Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 20 of my Ultimate Python 3 tutorial series. In this tutorial, I'm going to cover static methods, static variables, how to make your own modules, as well as the keywords import and from. Now, static methods are going to allow access without the need to initialize a class. And they, as you're going to see here, they should mainly be used as utility methods or when a method is needed but it doesn't make sense for the real world object to be able to perform a task and so what I'm going to do here is create a sum object that is only used to provide a utility function called get sum so let's create our class sum and you use the static method decorator which looks like this at static method to define that a method is static and so let's create it. So here is get sum, and we're going to say that it's going to receive an unknown number of arguments that we'll be able to perform a calculation on. We're going to first say sum is equal to, or maybe we should say sum one to avoid conflicts. Then we're just going to cycle through all of those different arguments that were passed inside of here, and then add those to sum. And then after we're done cycling through all of them, we can just return that new sum. All right, so there it goes. And now we're going to be able to come down here and inside of main, we're just going to call that function to work for us. So we'll say sum and then follow it up with by calling our sum class by name. See, we didn't create an object here. Get sum and then we could pass in as many values as we would like just as you've seen in previous tutorials and then we'll just call our main function to execute and if we run it whoops I accidentally didn't call this sum1 alright so let's run it again and you can see that it kicked back the sum is equal to 15 alright so pretty neat stuff that's how static methods work so how do static variables work well, let's go and let's create another one let's just get rid of this here so what we're going to do now is we are going to create a dog class. And basically it's what you need to understand is that fields that are declared in a class but outside of any method are known as static variables. And it's important to understand that their value is going to be shared by every object of that class. So whatever the value is for one object, it's going to be the same for all the other ones. And again, let's just come in and let's create a static variable. So let's say number of dogs is equal to zero. And this is going to track the number of dog objects that are created. And I think you can see here that this does perform a utility operation for us because dogs can't count. So what we're going to do is say unknown whenever our dogs are initialized and self name we're gonna assign if the dog has a name and you're going to proceed the the static variable being number of dogs with the class name like this dog num of dogs whenever you want to change its value so we've created a new dog object so we're gonna increment number of dogs then we're gonna create a static method to go and provide the number of dogs there are and how we do that static method and then define and get num of dogs now that we've done that we just print there are currently dogs and we'll go and call format on this and once again to get a hold of the static value just go whatever the class name is num of dogs and there we got it and then down inside of main we can go and create spot is equal to and create a dog and give it the name of spot and then we could create Doug and create another dog and give it the name of Doug and then we could come in and just go and reference the object spot or we could do the same with dog of course and if we wanted to get the num of dogs we could do so oops num of dogs 
and there you can see that it prints out there are currently two dogs. Alright, so there's static variables as well as static methods. And now I'm going to show you how to make custom modules. Alright, so what we're going to do now is one of your programs is going to contain a main function and then you're going to create your own custom module in another file and pull in functions from it. So what we're going to do is we are going to create a new function over here. Let's just go and click on this new and Python file and we're just going to call it sum it's automatically going to go and put the extension PY at the end of it. And this is our function that we had before. You can pause your screen here while I clean this up and type in all of this. So it's just going to cycle through all of these different values that are passed inside of here and then return them. So this is in the sum.py file. We're going to save it. And then over in this one, we're going to go and actually call it. So how do we import it? Well, you just list the file that you want to import from minus the .py at the end. And then you're going to be able to get access to those functions by proceeding with the file name and then the function that you want to work with. So we could say print and sum and just follow this up with the file name and the function you want to work with, get sum. And there we go. Save that. Whoops, had a little bug. Someone, someone, someone. Make sure all of those are someones. All right. And then we run it. And you're going to see that it was able to get that summed right like that. All right. Now there's other ways to get information. You're also going to be able to use from to copy specific functions only from a module. And then you would also be able to import all of them using the star function. So let's go and use from here. So we could say from sum import and we're just going to get get sum. So we got that. And what that's going to allow us to do is come in here and get rid of the need to have sum there like that and run it and get the same results. All right, so cool stuff. Hopefully you enjoyed that. And like always, please leave any questions or comments down below.